So this video is the third in a series on torsion. In the previous videos, we learned about torque and twist. And this question kind of puts it together because what we're given is we're given a torque is at the end of this beam. And that torque is applied such that the maximum allowable torsional shear stress is developed in the shaft. We're told the, sh the shear stress is 80 megapascals. All right, and at that stress, at that torque, what we want to find is the angle of twist. So we have to look at a couple things. One, we have to look at our equation for torsional shear stress, which is TR or T, you know, C over J. And second, we're gonna look at our equation for twist, which is gonna be TL over JG. And these are different things that we're, we're gonna need to figure out, but what we know here is, is T is the torque, and, and let me just label each of these, you know, R, the radius, J, polar moment of inertia, and when we put those in, we're solving for the shear stress. And similarly down here, you know, we still have torque. Um, now L is, stands for length, J is still the polar moment inertia, and G is the shear modulus or, or modulus of rigidity. And when we plug those in, we get the angle of twist, right? And what we need to know here is in radians. So I'm gonna write that in capital letters because I like to shout at you sometimes. But one thing you need to remember is this is radians, right? This is a big deal. So you, you need to multiply by 180 over pi to get to back to degrees. All right, so these are a bunch of formulas and it's, you know, there's a lot of different pieces in there. The one other piece that we need to know is this formula for J. So J in the FE reference handbook is given as pi times A to the fourth over two. And what we know A is, is for any given um, circle, A is the radius. Okay, that's gonna give us our maximum torsional shear stress, right? And you can find that shear stress at other points, but A, in this case, is going to be the radius. Okay, so basically we have three equations we need to solve for one problem, right? And this is, this is gonna be one approach. If you want a shortcut, you can skip to the end of the video. I'll put a link to the time code below, but I'll, I'll do it this way first, and then I'll look at sort of a shortcut where we kind of go through it. So first, let's go and solve you know, this equation to solve for T. So I'm gonna make a little bit of room here, and what we'll say is T, you know, if we multiply both sides by J divided by R is going to equal tau times J divided by R. Okay, so we should probably first find J, so let's go through that just for the fun of it. But J is gonna equal pi times A, and we know that we have a, ra a diameter of three centimeters, so that means our radius is gonna be 1.5 centimeters. I like to convert that to millimeters, so 10 millimeters per centimeter. And then we have to take that to the fourth power. Divide all that by two. So when we solve for J, we get a big number of 79, 522 uh, millimeters to the fourth. Okay, so that's J, but now what that allows us to do is to substitute in. So we're gonna put in 80 megapascals. That was the allowable torsional shear stress that we were given times J, which is this big number here, 79522 millimeters to the fourth divided by R. We're told that, you know, we know that here R is gonna be 15 millimeters. And what we get is a value of 4, 2, 4, 1, 1, 5. And the units work out here when everything's in megapascals and millimeters to be Newton millimeters. So the last step here is just to go right in and to solve for theta, right? So theta equals, well, what? Well, we already solved for T, which is a torque, so we can just put that in, 4, 2, 4, 1, 1, 5, Newton millimeters, right, times L, in this case, four meters. I'm gonna convert that to millimeters, 4,000 millimeters divided by JG. So J we've already figured out is 79522 uh, millimeters to the fourth. And G we were told here is 30 gigapascals, right? So if I move this down a little bit, you can see it, but 30 gigapascals, that's equivalent to 30,000 uh, megapascals, and again, if we have megapascals, newtons, millimeters, the units all work out nicely. And when we solve this, we're gonna get 0 0.7111, and remember, the twist is in radians, so don't forget the twist on the twist equation. This is in radians, which we need to convert you know, to degrees, 180 divided by pi, and the total number of degrees we get is 40.7 degrees. All right, so that's pretty cool because that's our answer. That's the amount 
of twist that we get at the free end of this, right? If you just stopped right here at the 0.711, you might be tempted to come up and, and pick you know, your, your answer of one degree. But that one is incorrect, okay? That's not good. What we do know here is we have 41 degrees as an answer, and that is our solution. All right, so for those of you that want an easier way, let me show you a little shortcut here, right? Because what you'll notice is that in both of these equations, right, we have J. And here, this is kind of cool because J and J, well, what happens? Well, let's just play a little game of algebra here. So if we take theta here, I'm just gonna make a little bit of room here. And if we take theta, let's see what happens. So I'm just gonna take theta and this equals TL over JG. But instead of T, I'm gonna write this equation in and see kind of what happens, right? So if we put this equation in, tau times j divided by r, right? That's what we had for t over here, right? Times the length divided by j, g. Well, the cool thing here is, right, what happens is j goes away. And when that happens, it simplifies our equation down to tau times l divided by r, times g. And the neat thing is, we just eliminated the need to go and calculate j, right? Because j cancels out, and that's pretty cool. So what happens is we get the same value eventually, but we we skip a step here. So on the FE, that can be an important time that you save. You don't have to go look up the j formula because that's in another part of the book, right? But what we get here is tau, which is 80 megapascals, times our length, which is 4,000 millimeters divided by our radius which was 15 millimeters times our g which was 30,000 uh, megapascals and, and likewise when we do this out we're going to get 0 0.7111 radians you know we multiply that by 180 over pi and we get the same thing a 40 Point seven degrees without ever having to calculate J. So that's a one step shortcut. Maybe it helps you. Um, maybe you don't like doing this algebraic manipulation. Even if you don't, what you could do is you could leave this value, right, in terms of J and just never solve for J. And when you plug it in down here, the J will go away, right? So that's pretty cool. Um, but again, with the twist equation, don't forget there's a twist. You have to multiply to get to degrees. And, you know, make sure you cross your T's, dot your I's, and you'll be doing well, all right? So, hey, I hope this helps. If you have questions, feel free to drop a comment below. Otherwise, keep working hard, moving onward and upward.